Hi everybody, welcome to Pilates. Here we are again. Can you believe it's Wednesday again? Time flies, doesn't it? Doesn't it just like, like it's scary actually. Um, anyway, I'll stop waffling. Let's get going. Everybody come and stand on the mat. Let's just... There. Okay. So, place your feet underneath your hips and just find your center point. Okay. Think about putting weight through your big toe and your little toe and your heel. And I don't mean like jam it down, but just connect. The arches are lifted. Your knees are in a strong position. They're not bending, they're not locked out, they're just strong. Your pelvis is in neutral. We're lifting. The sacrum is anchoring down. We've got space between the ribs and the hips. And we're thinking about our rib cage just softening. Watch that it's not stuck out here. Sometimes we end up with this sort of very lifted chest. So just relax it. Relax it, but don't slouch. There's the difference, okay? Sometimes we, we get stuck up here and we think, oh, I've got to just come down like that. And then we've actually slouched. All we want to do is just soften. And I've still got loads of space there. Relax the shoulders and think about your head being on top of your shoulders. So not just in forwards, just on top. Okay. Breathe into the rib cage and feel your ribs expand as you inhale. And as you exhale, feel them relax. Inhale, the ribs open wide. Exhale. Keep going with the breathing. Stay, stay with it, guys. Here's what I want you to do. Carry on breathing. As you're breathing out, I want you to start to now engage the transverse abdominus that lowest level of abdominals that wraps around your center, okay? So as I'm breathing out, it's like a belt that draws in, okay? going and it's not gripping it's literally like tight up like drawing the waistline in okay but not gripping and not squeezing bottom that's your transverse abdominus we're going to think about the pelvic floor as well think about where your sit bones are where your pubic bone is and where your coccyx is you have a diamond underneath those four points as you're breathing out and you're engaging, I want you to think about lifting that diamond. And then as you inhale, you relax. So when you're breathing out, you're drawing up. When you're inhaling, you're relaxing, okay? Don't worry if you're not getting it, it's okay. It's just that you're not used to maybe working those muscles and it can sometimes feel a little bit hard to connect. When you're working and trying to connect with the deeper muscles, it's a different feeling to switching on the big global muscles. That's why sometimes when we talk about working our core, we very often just end up bracing and tensing, squeezing, and the pelvic floor, we end up just sort of squeezing our bottom and gripping, and then we don't actually work the correct muscles. So carry on with the breathing. Every time you breathe out, that's when you engage. Okay. We're going to add an arm float to that. Relax the shoulders. So, it's, this is not about just 
doing that with the arms, okay? There's so much going on here. We're thinking about that pelvic floor engaging, okay? So as I'm lifting my arms up, I'm exhaling, and I'm drawing my tummy in, and I'm lifting my pelvic floor up, but I'm not squeezing my bottom or tensing. And it's sort of like I'm floating from the shoulder blades. That's the feeling I wanna have, that I'm floating from the shoulder blades. My head is lifted. It's on top of my shoulders. My shoulders are relaxed. My waistband is pulling in, but it's not tense. Awesome, let's just do a couple more. And one more. And relax. I still want you to bring an awareness to the pelvic floor. We're gonna add a heel lift. As you're doing it, try to keep the pelvis really still. So as I lift the heel, I don't want to do that or sink. Okay, guys, keep going. I'm just going to put the light on. It's getting a bit dark now in here. Good. Okay, I've got um, I've got hay fever, and when I get hay fever, because I wear contact lenses as well, my eyes get really blurry, and I end up doing that. So if you feel like I'm sort of doing a funny wink at you. That's what it is. <laughs> okay, so when we're breathing out, we're lifting the heel and we're working through the pelvic floor. So it's all about connection. Again, it's that same thing. It's easy just to go, oh, I'm just like doing that. Yeah, this is why, and I'm preaching to the converted, I get that, but this is why a lot of people don't understand Pilates because they think, oh, I'm just standing there moving my foot and I can just easily do that. We know it's more than that. It's about this connection. It's about me finding that level pelvis, finding that stability, yeah? I wanna be nice and even. I'm lifting, yeah? I'm engaging my deep core muscles. And that's different, to the, it's a different feeling to the global muscles. We're gonna now add an opposite arm to the leg, but I'm still focusing on the same thing. Exhale and inhale, opposite arm to leg. And we know that when that arm floats up, the shoulder has to stay down. Let's do a couple more, guys. Easy, easy, easy. That's nice. And one more. Okay, so now place your hands on your hips just so they're sort of out of the way. But obviously don't slouch. Keep your posture. You're going to lift up onto the tip of the toe without swaying, yeah? So really try and do it without going over there. Once you're on the tip of the toe, you turn the knee out without sinking. Yeah, it's not like pose time. That is one of my favorite poses actually, but we're not doing that. <laughs> Bring it back in and place it down. Then we do the other side. In fact, you know what? Let's stay on the same side and let's really nail that one side. So choose whichever side you want to do first. We're gonna carry on with it. And actually, with your hands on your waistline there, you, can, you should feel that engagement, yeah? With your hands here, you should actually feel like it's like a belt that pulls tight and flat. So as I'm lifting the leg and getting that rotation, I can actually feel this belt flattening in. Not because I'm tensing it, but because I'm engaging, I'm using my breath. The breath control. Breathing is the first principle of Pilates. It means so much. When you breathe correctly, it puts you into the parasympathetic nervous state. It allows the blood to flow around the body better. You can nourish your body. You just help you. 
Let's try the other side. Okay, let's see if, 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 if there are any comparisons. Now, what we're doing here, we're flexing and abducting at the same time. So we've got hip flexion and abduction happening. And you've got two little muscles called obturator internus that support the pelvic floor and pelvic girdle. And they can be toned and strengthened by doing an exercise, which is hip flexion and abduction, which is what we're doing right now. So again, you might, so some people might think, oh, I'm just doing that, which yeah, we could just do that. But if we're using the breath and we're thinking about that pulling up and that engaging, we're strengthening the muscles of the deep core, the pelvic floor. And the pelvic floor is not just muscles that need to be strengthened for someone who's just a baby, it's for everybody. It's not gender specific, it's not, it's not really specific. It, everybody needs to work the pelvic floor. It tends to get the press that it's for pregnant ladies, actually it's for everybody. It's part of your deep core and we want to keep this, they're holding, they're supporting all of your organs. So you want those muscles to be strong. Still breathing. I know I'm jabbering on, but hopefully you're still breathing. I do find it quite hard to shut up, so I apologise. These classes are the only chance I get to talk, that's the thing. Otherwise I'm just like here, like talking to myself. So it's quite nice. To, I'm still kind of talking to myself, but it's nice to see people talk to. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. Try to. Okay, so we've engaged. We're thinking about that belt, transverse abdominis, the pelvic floor, not squeezing the bottom. Let's relax our shoulders and just don't bend the knees, but don't lock them out. We're going to do roll downs. Okay, and as we roll down, if we are engaging the transverse abdominis and we're lifting through the pelvic floor, then our spine is supported, okay? If you had a disc bulge or a prolapse disc sort of 10 years ago, chances are you probably haven't got it now. If you know you've got one at the moment and it's very present and you're getting like psychotic symptoms and things like that and you know that it's there, then I would ask you not to do loaded flexion and I would get you just to bend your knees and actually just do a little bit of the hinge back instead. Or you could maybe do some half roll downs from the thoracic, okay? But if you haven't got any known lower back injuries, roll downs are actually really nice to do because they get the spine, we get mobility through this part of the back, okay? We can still do that with um, disc issues, but we're better off doing it on the floor, okay? So choose where you want to go. You could choose hinge backs, you could choose half roll downs, or we're going to go all the way down. But remember, the focus is going to be this little belt drawing in and the pelvic floor lifting up, but no squeezing. Take a breath in, exhale, lift first, and down we go, just to where it feels good. Remember to keep engaging because that's what's going to support your spine. Inhale at the bottom. And as you exhale, draw the tummy in, roll it up, and you're stacking up one bone at a time, head comes up last. Take a lovely big breath at the top, that feels so good. And we're gonna go again. Now keep the knees soft, keep the head tucked in, don't let the head do this. Yeah, let the spine move in sequence. As you're rolling up, guys, I want you just to notice and think about what your knees are doing. And try to get them both to lengthen at the same time. Just don't sort of strain your neck. When I say observe and notice, I don't mean physically move your head, but think, just feel it and notice and keep going, guys. I'm just jabbering on. Keep going. Notice if one leg straightens before the other, because then you've got a bit of a pelvic imbalance, yeah? And if you have, just focus on trying to get them to straighten at the same time then you're bringing your body back into balance. So if one leg is doing something different to the other one, it doesn't mean that's the end of the world, I can never correct that. It just means we now have to focus on moving our body so it works uh, in symmetry, okay? And these little exercises are really, really important because they, 
get you in tune with your body. We're slow moving, we're breathing, we're observing, we're noticing. We're moving very slowly as well. We're noticing what our body's doing. And the more in tune you are with your body, the better you are going to feel. If you're doing the hinge back, you're still noticing the same thing. You still want to be not observing like a real quick head down, but thinking, are my legs lengthening at the same time? Is my waistband drawing into support my spine? Am I keeping my spine long? If I put a broom handle there, would it stay in the same position? Are my shoulders relaxed? So whether you're doing the hinge back or the roll down, these are all things we want to be thinking about. This is going to be our last one. So nice. And then I'm going to ask you guys to come down to the floor, okay? Just having a quick bit of water. Really dry throat today. I think it's something in the air. No, I went out running earlier. The running people that are here, like Gina, will get this. I've been running, like, a little bit during lockdown. I went running with Liz Weeks this afternoon. I feel like I need to check myself into rehab. It was one of the most horrific experiences of my entire life. I haven't run for, with her for ages, and it was really hard. <laughs> right, anyway, sorry. Just had to share that with you. Come and lay down. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So we're laying down, we've got our shoulder girdle engaged, we're just going to let the shoulders just settle into the floor. We're not going to let our head tip back. If your head does this and there's nothing you can do to stop that and you can't get it to go down, get a little something and put it underneath your head. Nothing too big because you don't want to be like this because that's what we're going to do. Just enough to lift it and keep it in alignment. You can feel that the ribs are soft and your sacrum is anchoring down. And we're going to bring that breath into the pelvic roll. And we're going to think about our pelvic floor again. Now, actually, when you're laying down, it's easier to engage the pelvic floor. When you're standing up, you've got gravity, which makes it a bit harder. So when we're laying down and we're rolling our pelvis, it's going to be easy to find those connections. So remember, it's not squeezing. It's just this little pulling in, and it's the feeling that your sit bones and your pubic bone and coccyx, this little diamond that's there, is drawing together. And it's sort of like a tissue being pulled out of a box. That's the feeling you want to have. So we're going to go into a little posterior tilt with breath out and that pulling up happening all at the same time. Let's just start to do it together. I'm hardly moving. I'm just rolling to the tip of my sacrum and back out again. Yeah, I'm just going to the tip of the sacrum and back out to neutral. And I'm zipping here. Do it again and stay in the position. So you're going to exhale, stay here. So this is pulling in. It's not, you're not sucking or tensing, but it's scooped. You're opening through the hips. You can feel that the back has gone into the mat, not because you're pushing it, but because you rolled the pelvis. Now stay there and see if you can draw your waistline in a little bit more. Just the feeling that your belt's tightening up a bit more and you're lifting through your pelvic floor a little bit more. And then bring it back out again to neutral, not back out the other way. So again, roll to the tip of the sacrum. Stay there. Feel now that you've got this scooping. It's like a concave. It's like a space that you could sit a ball in. 
this is really flattening. This is really pulling up. Stay there, draw your waistline in a little bit more. Feel more connected and then roll back out again. Let's do that again. Exhale. Stay there, take a little breath in. As you breathe out, draw your waistline in a bit more. And roll it away. So it's all coming from this band, pelvic floor, and there's no squeezing of bottoms, okay? We're gonna do two more, let's do it together. And then last one, so you're rolling. When you get there, you stay there, take a little breath in. And as you breathe out, you draw it again, and then you roll away. So now we're really connected, and you should really be now connected to the transverse abdominis and the pelvic floor. Maintain those connections without the back arching and everything staying stable. And keep the space between the ribs and the hips the same. As you float one foot off the mat, but notice it didn't go very high, I'm just hovering, okay? I just hover the foot, then I place it back down. And then do the other side. So the smaller the movement, the harder it is actually, because you've really got to focus on that stability. Again, it's one of those things where if someone didn't know about Pilates, they'd go, oh, what, you're just put, picking your foot up and putting it down. We know better, right? We know that we're thinking of the rib and the hip staying to say, the same. If you're doing this right, you should really feel like you're fully engaged around here, the pelvic floor, it's all having to work really hard to keep you stabilized, to keep that pelvis nice and still. Your arms are just on the floor. I know I keep moving mine around. For some reason, I can't talk about moving my arms. Your arms are on the floor, lightly pressing into the floor, not pushing the ribs up, and reaching the fingertips towards the ankles. So as you're lifting that leg, now remember, still stay mindful with it. Watch that we don't tilt or start to push the back into the floor when we lift the leg. But now you're going to lift it and you're going to take it all the way to the end. It's just still floating and hovering, completely stretched, but make sure that you don't stretch it away and arch the back. You're very much pulling the femur back into the acetabulum. Then it comes back in, place it down, keep the foot in line with the knee. Other side, lift, stretch it away long, bring it back and down. You're thinking about the leg that's not moving, staying really still. It mustn't move. You're working those stabilizers on that single side. You're keeping the leg low. It just floats along the mat. And you're thinking about your ribs and your hips staying in the same position. Are we breathing? So like we did when we were standing, we're going to add an opposite arm to this. And now we have to work harder because we don't want the back to go into an arch, which can very much happen if we're not focusing. So as the arm and leg move away from the body, the body position has to stay exactly the same. The ribs don't move. The back doesn't move. The pelvis doesn't move. Your sacrum, which we're always talking about, that big triangular bone at the bottom of the pelvis, should stay still. If you can feel it moving around, we might not, you know, we don't we have got stability. That needs to just stay in position. You need to be very much just focusing on this waistline. Just gently drawing in. Just gently drawing in. And as the arm is going overhead, you're drawing your shoulder blade into your body. We're going to do one more on each side, really focusing 
on that technique and that control. And this is your last one. Okay, really nice. Guys, bring your knees and feet together. Keep your arms where they are. And we're still gonna focus on the waistband. Okay, the waistline. So, you're gonna let your knees go across to the side a tiny bit, that's it. Keep the shoulder blades down, keep the feet together like you've got two feet in one sock. As we bring the legs back to the center, use the waistline, like what we did when we were doing those rolls. We drew the waistline in and that's what's gonna bring your legs back, okay? So then we go the other way, we inhale across. Now, as we exhale, draw the waistline in, let that be the focus. And you'll really, you should really feel a difference doing it this way. So then it doesn't become about the legs moving, it becomes about the waistline, the core, the stabilizers of the deep core controlling the movement. The knees and feet and ankles are together. The shoulder blades stay on the floor. And this is not about how far across your knees can go. That's kind of irrelevant. That's not what the exercise is. It's about using your waistband to control the movement. So our transverse abdominus, our deepest layer of abdominals, works autonomously. Yeah, it just works without us having to think about it. So whenever we're walking or running, whatever we're doing, that muscle is working. However, it doesn't mean that it's strong. So even though it's working autonomously, if it's weak, then we get problems in the body and we get injuries and stuff. So when we talk about strengthening the core, it's not about tensing it and working the abs. It's actually this transverse abdominus becoming more efficient. So that's why we want to just get that drawing in like a belt, like an sort of elasticated, I think I had one of it. I had a pom-pom, pom-pom, <laughs> a pom-pom dress in the 80s. Do you remember those? Like a pom-pom thing and a, a, like a sort of elasticated belt that had three little clips in it. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. You know what I mean though, don't you? The belt that went round the three thick bits of it. It's that, that's the belt, okay, with the pom-pom dress. I used to love pom-pom dress. They should bring, they should have come back. Maybe they had. I'm just not cool enough. I wouldn't know about that. Okay, we're gonna do one more. We're still drawing in the waistline. We're using the waistline to connect to bring it back. Okay, amazing. So now bring your feet and knees back to hip width, okay? And we've been laying on our back for quite a long time, so I want you to very gently come up. Okay. And you are going to oh, just sit up nice and tall for a moment. That feels good. We're going to lay on our tummy, okay? So now we're going to work the other way. When you lay on your tummy, the main thing I want you to think about is this waistband, yeah? This, you know those elasticated belts that had three little things and it clipped it? One of those. That's your transverse abdominus, okay? You're just, it's like a little elastic band that's elasticated waistband that just draws in. When you lay on your tummy, that's what I want you to think about. So when you're getting that pulling in feeling, you're laying on your front, you should feel that your tummy muscles just draw in, but you didn't move your body to do it, yeah? So it's just this pulling in. If you notice my hand and watch me draw in, It's that. It's really hard to see because that's how subtle it is. I'm going, to come, I'm going to come here. Okay. So it's literally, this is me just relaxing and this is me now pulling in. Yeah. So I didn't move my back. So when you lay on your tummy, it's this going that needs to happen, not move the back. Okay. So let's do that. So lay on your tummies, guys, okay? Put one hand on top of the other, forehead on the hands. I'm going to come to a bit of an angle because it's easy for you to see what's going on. And think about the waistband pulling in. Okay. 
I do apologise. If you were born after the 70s, you won't know what the Pompon Fifth waistband thing is. I'm going to just stop talking about that now. Okay. Relax the shoulders. Your legs are reaching away from your head. Okay. And you've got your waistband lifted. And that's all we're going to do. Just I want you just to observe that you're lifting through and you're drawing in your waistline. Your glutes, now this is a tricky one. I don't want you to like really squeeze them to death, but don't completely just let them go floppy. You, they want to be somewhat on, yeah? Somewhat on, but not really gripped. And then you're going to energize your legs. So it's like someone's got your ankles and is pulling them away from your head. That's the feeling you want to have. And you should feel that your pubic bone is touching the floor but your lower abdominals have drawn in because your waistband has gone tighter. It's supporting you, but it's not tensing and gripping. It's just supporting. And you're going to maintain that feeling as we go into a back extension. So you're going to lift up, but you're not going to go very high. So I go to about here. I've still got my waistband pulling in, my pubic bone is touching the mat, and my waistline is lifted. So I can't feel any tension in my lower back, and I haven't pushed up and hyperextended. I'm just going long. I'm imagining there's a piece of string here in the middle of my head, and it's being pulled that way, and the rest of my body's pulling up, and then I'm going to come down. Let's add a breath to that, and let's make it more challenging by doing an in breath as we're going up. So breathe in as you lift and breathe out as you come down. And I want you guys to think about your waistline drawing in, your legs staying energized, not like pointing and tensing them, but energized. You know where they are, they're switched on. Your armpits are pulling away from your ears. And you're getting traction, you're getting stretch in the spine, not compression. So when we can really engage with those deep core muscles and lift you through the pelvic floor and pulling in that belt, we start to feel things a bit differently. And that's why Pilates can take a long time to really get it. You might actually be doing this now and thinking, I just don't know what she's going on about. But over time, it does start to make sense. You get that lovely long feeling of stretching the spine. And let's just do one more. Reach it away. And relax. Well done. Awesome. Okay. Come and sit up. And place your feet just in line with the knees and the hips and just sit nice and tall. And I want you to imagine there's a barrel between your tummy and your legs. And we're gonna go over the barrel and then we're gonna inhale and come up against an imaginary brick wall. But the shoulders stay relaxed and we don't let the head droop. So it's sort of like I'm stretching over, but I'm as I'm going over, you know what I'm gonna say, don't you? I'm lifting through my pelvic floor and I'm just tightening the waistband. So as you go over, and actually, because you're sitting, or you should be, you shouldn't be slumped here, because you're sitting on your sit bones, you can feel where those sit bones are. Keep going, guys, I'm gonna be talking. As you're doing it, and you're exhaling and you're going over, feel like, and again, not squeezing, feel like you're bringing the sit bones closer together. That's the feeling you want to have. The sit bones are coming together as you're going over. And then you're drawing the waistline as well. You're not flopping onto the legs. You're supporting your spine and you're stretching your spine. It's sort of like a piece of rope here going up and over. And as you are going over and you're breathing out, you are bringing those sit bones together and you're drawing in your waistband. But even when I'm here, I'm focusing on, and you know, there might be skin in the way, but I'm focusing on the actual 
muscles lifting in so they're not flopped. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my body away from my legs. As soon as I go for the crown of the head, as soon as I initiate that movement, that's when the waistband pelvic floor connection comes in. And then it's like a continuation of connection. The further over I'm going, the more it's connecting. So it's not like um, you just switch it on. It sort of, it just keeps happening. So it's sort of like, as I'm going over, my waistband's kind of going and supporting me. Okay. It's okay if the toes come off. I've got quite, I've got high mobility. That's why my whole foot goes flat. If we're thinking my foot will not go flat like that, it's okay to keep the heels like that. Keep the toes up if that feels better. Okay. Let's do one more, lifting up and over. And really nice, okay. Sometimes the hips can get a little bit grippy. You might feel that. We're gonna roll down, so make sure you've got room to roll down and roll it down. We're gonna stay at the bottom. Okay, well done. So, back to that laying position. Everything we've been talking about, let's go back there. Shoulder girdle stabilized. The space between the ribs and the hips staying in alignment. The sacrum just gently anchoring down. There's no pressure. You've got a little bit of a gap underneath your back and you're not tipping your head back. Let's go back to that roll that we did earlier where we just rolled to the tip of the sacrum. You know the one where we just went. And that's it, back out. And there's no squeezing. It's exactly how we did it before. So we're gonna roll, pull in, Feel that concave. I'm not sucking up at the ribs. I'm just pulling in from down here, right down by the pubic bone, pubic synthesis. That's that's the feet. That's where we want to get that connection. Okay, so there's no pushing involved. It's just a pulling up, a drawing up. So for us to do a really good shoulder bridge, that's really how we want to initiate it. So let's. Start to do that and go a little and progress with it, okay? So you're gonna roll. Once you've got to the tip of the sacrum and the waistline's pulling in, but you're not squeezing yet, you are gonna to continue to go up a little bit. Now, the minute you curl off the floor, you then you must squeeze the bottom. We're only gonna to go to there, we're gonna stay there, have a hardly lifted, okay? So then before we come down, I want you to just keep the shoulder going again. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, the first thing we do is draw the waistband in and then come down to the tip of the sacrum and relax the bottom as you go back out to neutral. So we're really focusing on those deep muscles, okay? So we inhale. Exhale, just roll to the tip of the sacrum but don't squeeze your bottom. So this waistband is really, really pulling in. Now start to lift a little bit and squeeze your bottom as you come up, but only lift a teeny little bit. Stay there. So this is really scooping. Your bottom is squeezing. Your knees are in line. Your waistband is pulling in. You take a breath in, and the first thing you do when you breathe out is you draw the waistline in more. And as you do that, you can feel that your lower back then articulates better. If we can get this technique right, you'll get movement in your lumbar spine. Because a lot of the time with shoulder bridges, we just kind of do that and then we haven't moved through the lumbar. We want the lumbar spine to be mobile. So just keep going guys. Remember, if you've already thought, right, I thought I'll process that, just keep going with it. But I'm going to keep talking about the details so that it really starts to resonate. But just keep moving at your own pace. So you're starting by drawing the pubic bone to the belly button and you're just rolling to the tip of the sacrum. So then you've got this sort of concave feeling, hips are open, scooping in the tummy, not sucking up. 
as you continue to peel up and roll up in sequence, you squeeze your bottom and you've hardly lifted. You take a little breath in there. As you breathe out, the first thing you do is you pull the waistline in like that belt's been done up and then you start to come down. And as you pull the waistline in and roll down, you can feel you're getting more movement in the lumbar spine. Might not be a lot more movement. If your lumbar spine is quite jammed, it might not be a lot more movement, but you will get more. Okay, millimeters are like miles when it comes to this kind of thing. But it's all about the technique, the breath control. There's a lot of things to think about. And when, she, when it all comes together, when you get this, it will make such a big difference. It's these little movements and just learning how to move the body properly that's going to make a big, big difference to your life. Still keep the, the shoulder down engaged. You're lightly pressing the shoulder blades down. You're lightly pressing the arms into the floor. And you're observing each one. Remember when I say that, I don't mean sit up and look. You're thinking about how it feels. You're getting that feedback. You're really tuning in to what your body is doing. You're making sure that you've got symmetry. You're noticing that you're trying to move each vertebrae at a time, one at a time. And you'll notice by going really slow, really small, you'll notice if it starts to go a little bit wavery, yeah? You'll notice imbalances. So it's really good to do this kind of work and bring the body back into balance. Let's just do one more. And relax. Okay, well done. All right, guys, good work. So, we've really, I'm going to say a phrase now that I hate, but I'm going to say it anyway. We've really fired up the core. <laughs> okay, so we've got everything under control. Yeah, everything's under control. Everything's engaged and it's switched on, yeah? So then we can float one leg up. We keep the leg there. Don't actually do it, just think about lifting the second leg and you will know if you're able to do it without pushing the back, pushing the belly or changing anything. So think about it, pretend to do it, go as if you were going to do it and then do it. Okay, now, if you are straining and going red in the face, holding your breath and your belly feels tight and pushing and your back to change position, we're not quite there. Let's place that foot back down and then the other. So, I'm going to give you two options here. One is to carry on with one leg lifting and lower in than the other and just thinking about nothing moving. The second option is you lift the leg and then you lift the other leg. But you've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to think, oh, actually, when I lift that second leg, was there a bit of a, a bit of a lift in the lower back? Was there a bit of a jump? And place the back down. Now, in fairness though, the first couple of times you do it might not be great, but if you really tune in with it, when we start to get it but you you have to think about it so when you go to lift that second leg you've got to really think about it for a good four or five seconds before you lift it like a long time yeah because otherwise it's easy just to go like that and we've we've just we feel like we're doing it right but we just we have found a way to compensate if you go really slow and lift that one think about it and i know that nothing can move so my waistband is working and then I lift that second one. It's a lot harder. When you really focus on it, it makes such a difference. So go really slow. Try to alternate which leg you pick up first, yeah? So I don't want to feel any jump or anything. Imagine if underneath your lower back, there's just enough room to get one of those little Biscoff Lotus biscuits, right? My absolute favorite biscuit. You don't want to squash it. So you've got to make sure, they're quite flat little biscuits, aren't they? 
But you've got to make sure that when you lift that leg, it's not going to move. It's going to stay in position. And the belly's not going to push out. So again, if somebody didn't know much about Pilates, they'd be like, oh, what are you doing? Just lifting one leg up and the other. When you really think about it and you're really focusing on that stability and that control, you can notice such a big difference because all of a sudden the right muscles switch on. And sometimes, you know, we don't like doing these exercises because they can seem quite boring, but it's so important. And even as you're putting the foot down, you want it to land with no weight through it. It lands lightly. Your core is supporting you. So as the foot's going down, it's not banging down. You're landing like a cat. And we're still using the muscles of the pelvic floor. So every time I breathe out and I move, drawing in and I'm pulling up. Okay, that is your last one. Well done. Go back to that little roll to the sacrum. Just to the sacrum. No squeezing, no lifting, just that scooping in. And then back out again. Exhale, roll. Inhale away. And I want you to connect more now with the pelvic floor than the waistline. So I want you to think about not squeezing, but those sit bones coming together or the pubic bone coming to the coccyx. Another good one, if you, when you start to initiate the movement, don't squeeze the bottom, but draw up through your back passage. Draw gently up through the back passage. You, it sometimes helps you get that connection of drawing up through the pelvic floor. As you're doing it, really pay attention to what the legs are doing. Like in your head, think, oh, am I pushing a little bit more into one leg than the other? And if you are, adjust it. And this low panel is pulling in. And you're drawing up like an elevator, lifting. But there's no sucking going on. There's no pushing, it's just this pulling. And you should feel that you're also creating space in your hips. We're connecting with the breath. The breathing is so important. And let's do one more. And relax, okay. Just want you guys just to move your head side to side. Just easy, no pressure, no stress, just gently side to side. Nice and easy. And then just finish in the middle. And we're gonna gently come up, okay? So just take your time. You've been laying down for a long time again. So ease yourself up. So. <laughs> and just cross your legs. If crossing your legs doesn't work for you, you could actually stand up or you could sit in a chair. I just want you just to breathe, okay? So we're just gonna relax the shoulders. Remember though, relaxed doesn't mean like slumped. Relax just means the muscles aren't tense, but we want to think about our posture. So we're lifting up through the sit bones, pelvic floor. We're lengthening through the back of the head. We're relaxing the shoulders. And as we breathe in, we're going to take the breath down into the bottom part of the lungs. Feel that expansion as you inhale.
keep going. Remember, when you're breathing in, the roof expanding. As you're breathing out, we're thinking about the waistline. And we're thinking about the pelvic floor and the sit bones coming together, the drawing up through the back passage, the pubic bone and the coccyx sort of coming together, the whole diamond lifting, not tensing, not squeezing bottom. Keep going, guys. And like I said before, it's a continuation. It's not like when it's on, it's, it's. Yeah, like a juicy piece of fruit. You're squeezing the juice out of the fruit as you're exhaling and engaging. Just do a couple more, guys, well done. going to stand up and we're going to do it without using our hands okay so we're going to stand up hands free always 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 do hands free there we go and just stand and just step one foot back push your heel into the floor just keep the weight forward and feel that nice stretch through the calf and just hold it there and breathe, very blurry I go. Spend all of May and June sort of doing that. I did a whole Tough model once where I couldn't see a thing. Anyone that's got hay fever will know what I mean. You get like this, like you can't see. <laughs> and change legs. I'm sorry if I've bored you to tears with my puffball. Sure, that's what they were called, puffballs. Dresses in the 80s. Uh, puffball dresses and hay fever. I'll stop now. Okay, so just come back to standing. And now we've done that whole session, I want you to really think about the core. Not the core, but the whole body. Think about how it feels. Does it feel any different? Do we feel like we're a bit more lifted? Because this is what's lifting us up. Our power clock, it's everything's been, and the more lifted we are, easier things are, the easier it's going to be on our joints. Take a breath in, exhale, roll down. Inhale there, exhale, roll up. Guys, I want you to keep doing that. I'm back. It was like nothing ever happened. <laughs> okay, just roll your shoulders. Well done, guys. Take a few little shoulder rolls. And then just hold it there and relax. Okay, guys, well done. Give yourselves a clap. Awesome. I'm just going to unmute everybody for a moment. And you might not have anything to ask, but if you did, now is your chance. If there's anything there that you want to ask me, go for it. Is that the mail you mean, Rebecca? Oh, hello, who's that? It's Claire. Can you see the bell? That's the bell, yes, that one! <laughs> That's the one! That's the one! That's ex oh, thank you! I'm so happy, I kept rambling on about it, I was like, do I need to shut up now? Yes, that's the bell with the three, I love it. And I had a puff, I had a couple of puffball actually, but not, they were great those dresses. That's, that's the bell. So that's the belt we always need to wear when we're doing Pilates. Thank you. I have a skirt. What was that Gina? 
Zara skirts. Zara skirts, yes! Oh, they were the days. <laughs> um, guys, thank you. If anyone's got anything, say now. Cool. Guys, have a brilliant rest of the evening. I hope you enjoyed that, and um, I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.